Ibrahim Olufemi Gajabia Mila. God bless you all. I wish to acknowledge with the most incredible gratitude the efforts of our men and women in uniform. Speaker Femi Bajabiamila commends security agents for their steadfastness in protecting lives and property. Urgently to beef up security formations in the entire entirety of Edo Central Senatorial District. And House calls for the deployment of more security personnel in Edo State Central Senatorial District. Hello and welcome to another interesting package of the program House Ticket, a weekly program that keeps you informed on the activities of our lawmakers elected into the House of Representatives of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. My name is Dihelia Mamza. Lawmakers have just reassembled from the New Year break and this week we will bring you the activities and events that happened during plenary in the last one week. We also have reports from the committee room from where we will see the House Committee on Human Rights which held a one-day public hearing on a bill. This alongside other happenings make up this week's package of House Ticket. Please stay tuned for details coming up shortly. Keep watching. The entire purpose of the legislative agenda is to direct our legislative resources and efforts in a coordinated effort to ensure the well-being of the individual in a life of safety and freedom. That is a high ambition, but it's well worth the effort. We have passed landmark legislation to fix our oil and gas industry, reform the police, and reorganize the corporate administration system in our country. We have considered and passed meaningful legislation that impacts all areas of our national life. Welcome back and thanks for staying tuned. On Tuesday, 17th January 2023, Speaker of the House, Right Honorable Femi Bajabiamila, declared the recess over with a welcome address to his colleagues, where he expressed hope that they are prepared for the responsibilities ahead. Representative Femi Bajabiamila charged his colleagues to begin the new year with a renewed commitment to legislative action that brings them closer to achieving their highest aspirations for the nation at large. Let us resume with renewed determination to achieve better oversight of government spending priorities through a collaborative effort with the executive arm of government and civil society and remain dedicated to the lofty yet clear ambitions we articulated in our legislative agenda when we resumed in the ninth assembly the speaker urged his colleagues to focus their efforts on completing the tax that they have already initiated and closing out the assignment on which their legacy in the ninth house will be assessed several bills still in the legislative process need to be actioned as a matter of urgency as these bills propose significant improvements across different sectors of our national life some of these bills are still in committee, while others are awaiting concurrence in the Senate. We will see to it that we conclude work on these bills so that they can be presented to Mr. President during the life of this administration. Representative Femi Bajabiamila spoke on the fast approaching 2023 general elections, commenting on the increase in incidents of insecurity and vicious attacks on political actors in parts of the country. We must unite to ensure this dangerous trend does not lead to circumstances that threaten the forthcoming elections. The quality of the political conversations in society, particularly in the lead up to elections, is a determining factor in the electoral outcomes and the quality of governance that will result therefrom. When political discourse seeks to unite the people behind an agenda of shared prosperity, social development, and respect for the humanity of persons, governance will also reflect these priorities. The speaker also commended efforts of uniformed men and women in the country who have risked and sacrificed their lives for peace to reign. I wish to acknowledge with the most incredible gratitude the efforts of our men and women in uniform who at this moment are stationed in different parts of the country taking risks and offering the supreme sacrifice to keep the peace. They are the best of us. 
to whom we owe not only our gratitude but also our continued dedication to the offices we hold. Through our efforts to improve the lives of our people, let us make ourselves worthy of the sacrifices these men and women have made and continue to make on our behalf. Honorable colleagues, I welcome you back to the House of Representatives for a new legislative year. I look forward to a successful year of measurable achievements in the joint task of nation building. With that address, the House moved on to consider the business of the day being the first plenary of the year 2023, starting with motions on the matters of urgent public importance. Keep watching as we bring you reports on these motions. And kidnapping going on, on Tuesday, 17th January 2023, Representative Oyime Idem moved a motion on the unfortunate kidnapping and disappearance of Mr. Enobong Williamson in a community in Akwa Ibom State and need for the federal government to intensify efforts in curbing the incessant kidnappings in the country. On the third day of November 2022, Mr. Enobong Williamson was kidnapped by unknown men and all attempts to locate him has proved abortive. The entire community has since commenced a search for him, but no information has been obtained regarding his whereabouts. Worried that the family and associates of Mr. Enobon Williamson have been thrown into traumatic experience and agony. The lawmaker in his prayers condemned in strong terms the kidnapping and disappearance of the victim and other incidences of kidnapping across the country and urged the House to mandate the Inspector General of Police and other security agencies to intensify efforts in securing the release of the victim from the kidnapper's den. The motion was voted on and adopted. Still on the same day, Representative Anyakan Umana moved a motion on the urgent need to empathize with and provide relief materials for the victims of the recent fire in the main market in the Abak region of Akwa Ibom State. While the people all over the world were eagerly preparing and waiting to usher in the new year 2023 with joy, a devastating fire gutted down the popular Abak main market at the Abak market square area of Abak township in Abak local government area of Akwa Ibom State. On the 30th of December 2022 at midnight and raged all the way into the morning. The House further notes that the inferno, which began at about 12 midnight, lasted for over six hours, though it was brought under control through community efforts and intervention of men of the Federal, Federal Fire Service uh, at the wee hours of the morning. He also prayed for the House to call on the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development to immediately work out measures to assist the affected victims to restore their means of livelihood, urge the National Emergency Management Agency to urgently arrange for relief materials to cushion the effect of the losses incurred by the victims, urge the Federal Fire Service to enhance the operational capacity of their outposts in various parts of the country to enable them rise to location whenever a fire incident occurs. This motion is co-sponsored by Honorable Abdullahi Idris Garbar. Moving on to motions from the order paper, Representative Saeed Abdullahi alongside Representative Abdullahi Idris Garba moved a motion on the need to provide an alternative funding source for the reconstruction of Bida Zungeru Road in Niger State. The road leading to this strategic national asset, in addition to the huge agricultural endowment of the area, is in a total state of disrepair, leading to road traffic accidents and heavy post-harvest losses and lowering the ability of farmers in these communities to monetize their farm produce. Also concerned that, despite the approval of the Minister of Works and Transport for the redesign and reconstruction of the road, the amount captured in the 2023 Appropriation Act for the road is grossly inadequate and cannot make any significant impact on the project. Recognize that when reconstructed, the road will open up the western leg of the country to the Zingero Hydropower Project, which upon completion will generate 700 megawatts of electricity to meet close to 10% of the nation's total domestic energy need and have positive impact on the country's GDP through enhanced agricultural productivity and commercial activities in the area. The House resolved to urge the Federal Ministry of Works and Housing, Federal Ministry of Finance, Federal Inland Revenue Service and other relevant stakeholders to explore Executive Order 007 of 2019, Road Infrastructure Development and Refurbishment Investment Tax Credit Scheme 
to provide an alternative funding source to finance the reconstruction of the road, mandate the Committees on Works, Finance and Legislative Compliance to ensure compliance. The motion was voted on and adopted. Still from the order paper came a motion moved by Representative Sergius Ogun on the need to beef up security formations in Ondo Central Senatorial District of Edo State. The House is worried about the spate of kidnappings, armed robbery, attacks and insecurity generally in the country, especially in the Edo Central Senatorial District of Edo State, thus leading to the loss of lives and properties and is causing palpable fear. Mr. Festus Edugele was also kidnapped on January 9, 2023 at Ugoneki, same Ugoneki town, on his way to board a flight to Abuja in Benin City. The house is disturbed that these sad incidents occurred two days after 20 train passengers were kidnapped at the Igwebe train station while waiting to board the train to worry Delta State. The house appreciates the con started efforts by the team of Nigeria Arm, Army and Nigeria Police Force which led to the rescue of the President of the Gwebe Customary Court and Mr. Festus Edugele, as well as 18 out of the 20 train passengers kidnapped. The house is saddened by the death of DSP Michael Adams during the rescue operation by the Nigerian Army and the police officers as a result of gun duel with the kidnappers. The House, after consideration, resolved to observe a minute's silence in honor of the deceased police officer, DSP Michael Adams, who paid the supreme sacrifice while in active service, urge the Inspector General of Police to deploy more mobile police personnel to Edo Central Senatorial District of Edo State, also urge the Chief of Army Staff and the Inspector General of Police to set up a Nigerian Army Barracks or a Forward Operation Base FOB and a police mobile force base, respectively, within Edo Central Senatorial District of Edo State. Mandate the Committees on Army and Police Affairs to ensure compliance and report back within four weeks for further legislative action. The motion was voted on and adopted. Those against this, say nay. I have it. Several bills were presented for first reading during the week under review, amongst which include Federal Institute of Vocational and Technical Education, Akure North, Ondo State, Establishment Bill, sponsored by Representative Mayokun Lawson Alade, African Union Convention for the Protection and Assistance of Internally Displaced Persons, Domestication and Enforcement Bill, 2023, sponsored by Representative Dachung Musa Bagos, Standard Organization of Nigeria Repeal and Enactment Bill, 2023, sponsored by Representative Julius Ohunvere. The House also considered several bills at second reading. They include on a bill for an act to amend the Legislative Houses Powers and Privileges Act 2017 and for related matters sponsored by Representative Femi Gbaja Biamila and Representative Mohammed Tahir Mongono. What this bill seeks to achieve is to amend the Legislative Houses Powers and Privileges Act by immediately including after section 20 of the Legislative Houses and Powers Powers and Privileges Act and additional section 21 and 22, whereby members of the House of Representatives should be addressed and designated as representatives, while distinguished senators of the Senate will be designated as senators. The bill enjoyed the support of lawmakers. The speaker and the honorable Mogunu for coming up with this because Silence, it, is, it is highly time for us to address it. And I can tell you the word honorable, the way it's being used all over the nations. Even supervisory councillors that are called honorable, they, and everybody is honored. I think it is better this uh, we are here to serve the nation and to be addressed as representative of the, 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 the of the masses. There is no need to look low on any arm of government. As far as I'm concerned, well, they are all important. We need them to exist as a country and for the good governance of our country, 
of course, some people must serve at the virus SATA. So, not against this bill, but uh, the way you're putting it, councillors address as, of course, they are. If they're honourable, they should be addressed as honourable. And so also members of the National Assembly. Motion say I the bill was voted on, approved and referred to the a... Committee of the Whole. Still at second reading, the House considered a bill for an act to establish the Gum Arabic Research Institute and for related matters sponsored by Representative Mohammed Tahir Mungono. This bill was sponsored against the backdrop of the importance of Gum Arabic as a major source of revenue, especially against the backdrop of the fact that government is working hard not only towards the diversification of the economy away from oil to agriculture, but also looking for ways and means of generating our source of revenue, especially external revenue for the purpose of uh, bankrolling our critical infrastructure needs with all its attendant and concomitant effect of generating the much needed employment to our people. The bill generated robust debate. I believe if we are patriots in this country and we know that government today we have shortfall of revenue and we know we not protect our economy and that there's no need <laughs> duplication of institute in this country. I believe Mr. Speaker he has clearly established the need for us to optimize the use of gum Arabic. But because of the economics of scale, because of the challenges we have in the Federation, I think it would be good that with this cognate knowledge of Ministry of Agriculture and the institutions there, he can advise us and guide us on the institutions that will deal with this matter. Because of deforestation in our forests, most of these trees are cut down. So we need an outfit that can control this, that can establish this, and it will improve the revenue base of this country or the states where they have this gum Arabic. And also, it's exportable. We export it. We don't even have the pharmaceutical, the, the, the industries that can, can, uh, can leverage on this. So it will create, it will generate revenue, and it will improve the revenue base of this country. Gum Arabic is one special product one special species that we must also encourage to establish an institute that will not only harness and also provide chances and opportunities for revenue, but may provide research research initiatives to come up with an outfit that will cover that ground for Nigeria. At the end of the debate, the bill was voted on, approved and referred to the Committee of the Whole. A third reading, one bill was passed on the floor of the House in the week under review, which is a bill for an act to provide for establishment of Projects Development Agency PRODA in Ugu to conduct scientific, engineering and technological research aimed at facilitating the domestication and industrialization of appropriate technology for socio-economic advancement of Nigeria and for related matters. The motion say aye. Against say nay. That's a bit. You are still on to House Tickets, a weekly program that documents the workings of the House of Representatives, Federal Republic of Nigeria. We now go over to the committee room to bring you the one-day public hearing organized by the House Committee on Human Rights. Keep watching. I am from Gombe State and I... The House Committee on Human Rights held a one-day public hearing on a bill for an act to amend the Trafficking in Persons Prohibition Enforcement and Administration Act No. 4 of 2015 to include the Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development in its governing board, review the mode of appointing the Director General of the agency to strengthen the act by reviewing the offenses and penalty provisions and related matters. This was on Monday the 16th of January 2023. Our assassination cannot be an exception. In a welcome address, the deputy leader of the House of Representatives, Peter Akpatason, who represented Speaker Femi Bajabiamila at the hearing, said 
The public hearing came at a very crucial period as it is an electioneering moment. He shed light on what the bill seeks to amend. The bill seeks to amend trafficking in human persons, Enforcement and Administration Act number 4 of 2015 to include the overseeing ministry in its governing board, review the mode of appointment of the director general, and also review the offenses and penalty to strengthen the agency. Consequently, I believe that this forum will grant you the opportunity as stakeholders to make relevant and meaningful contributions to the sessions of the bill that will assist in enriching the proposed amendment for a robust act that will come there. In his remarks, Chairman of the Committee, Representative John Deere, also spoke on what the bill seeks to achieve. Okay, the bill is talking about uh, mode of appointment for the DG and then inclusion of the supervising ministry and then reducing membership of the board from uh, CO sales were two on the board initially. They are proposing that the civil society organizations should now be only one instead of two. Uh, and then uh, the bill is also talking about um, uh, penalties. Uh, over the years, uh, because of um, various crimes that are so intense, uh, rape, uh, some resulting to even losses of life, and so on and so forth, it is therefore imperative to review penalties for a lot of crimes that are related to trafficking. Some stakeholders present at the hearing made their submissions and contributions on the bill. When you look at the elements and the ingredients that, that are required to prove cases of trafficking in persons, it requires three elements, which is the act, the recruitment, the transfer, transportation, harboring, and receipt of a person. Second element, means, through the means of deceit, fraud, abuse of office, or taking advantage of the vulnerable position of somebody. And the last one, purpose, for the sole purpose of exploitation. So those three elements are totally different from the general um, labor exploitation they were talking about. We have looked through the bill and our comment is just um, to support the amendment so far and to further include that the commission will strongly recommend that we be part of uh, the board, uh, the NAPTIP board, looking at the important role the commission, you know, human rights plays in issues of trafficking. Looking at the role that the Nigerian Security Service Defense Corps play uh, in its security architecture, as well as in collaboration with the uh, NAPTIP, we also recommend that um, uh, the Nigerian Security Service Defense Corps should be part of the board of the NAPTIP to actually strengthen the um, existing uh, collaboration and, the and to create the necessary synergy between these um, agencies. It's imperative to have a fair representation of non-governmental organizations on this board. The composition of the CSO covers faith and community-based organizations, which have two different angles in addressing the subject matter. So it's our view that this proposed subparagraph expunged and the principal acts retained. The deputy chairman of the committee, Representative Elisha Karu, appreciated the stakeholders for their participation and assured them that all their submissions will be given due consideration. It's time now to end the program. We urge you to follow our programs showing on this channel and any of our social media platforms showing on your screen. Don't forget to send in your comments, observations and questions and we'll do our best to get our representatives address them accordingly. Remember to stay safe always.